What's up, good people? It's Pete Thorne. I'm here in my studio, and I've got a friend here today. This is my friend Evan from ASI Audio. Hello. And I've got some things in my ears right now. You might recognize these as uh, in-ear monitors. And you might be asking yourself, why am I wearing these and talking? And how can I possibly hear Michael if I've got these in my ears right now? And the reason is... Um, Pete's using our new 3DME Generation 2 in-ear monitor system by ASI Audio. Dr. Michael Santucci of Sensophonics, you may have heard of, um, has built microphones into the IEMs themselves. As if you have no IEMs in at all if you're using it in the ambient mode. So on and off for about the last 20 years, I've been using in-ear monitors of one sort or another. And right from the get-go, from the very first tour that I did with them up until pretty much recently, I've always had a real struggle. I mean, I can do it and I've, you know, it's been mandated on many tours that I've done. It's like, we're using in-ears, that's it. There's no amps on stage, that kind of thing. And you just get used to it and you use them. But do I feel like I'm at my best when I'm using traditional in-ear monitors? Not really. Do I feel like I enjoy playing live as much? Not really. Am I a little more self-conscious and like, uh, you know, timid as a player? Yeah, I think so, with in-ears in. And there's definite advantages to them. I mean, the mix being consistent from day to day, being able to hear the exact same thing no matter where you're standing on a stage. That's also a minus to me though at times, and more on that in just a little bit. Generally speaking, I think they're really good for singers. Singers tend to not sing as hard, so they preserve their voices more when they're using in-ears, but sometimes that even can cause problems. A lot of musicians really like them, keyboard players, drummers, you know, vocalists, but as a guitar player, the weirdest thing is always hearing that pinpointed guitar sound that is sort of the equivalent of sticking your ear right up to a speaker. That's not the way that, you know, we generally listen to our guitars when we grow up playing guitar. We plug into an amp and the amp is always like a little bit further away, a couple feet away from you. It's off axis. You're hearing the amp kind of interact with the room that you're in. And then when you start playing live, you know, as you get older, or, you know, you move up to band practice in the garage or whatever, you're hearing an old amp bouncing around the garage. <laughs> and in clubs, you know, that kind of the way the amp interacts with the stage and all that. It's a very different sound than the sound that's coming pinpointed right out of the speaker like a microphone sees. So as a player adjusting to that like really intimate, you know, guitar right here uh, thing, that was always a difficult thing for me. I always felt like it made me play a little more timid. If you make a mistake, you hear every little pick scrape and every single little thing, every single little detail. And I've talked to a lot of guitar players that feel the same way. Also, if you use a mono rig, like probably most guitar players, that pinpointed sound, like where do you do, where do you put it? Do you put it center, do you put it in your left ear, do you put it in your right ear, what do you do with it? Sometimes it's okay if you've got a big band, you can pan yourself to one side and pan the other guitar player over to another side or something like that. But with that mono sound, I at times would want to hear myself louder in bands that I've been in. Uh, than you know everyone else and maybe I'd panned my guitar and I actually started getting some th uh, tinnitus in my left ear because I was cranking up my guitar a few dB louder than every other instrument and that kind of burned out my left ear a little bit in the kind of mid 2000s. Luckily that kind of subsided after a few years the ringing in my left ear it, it seems like it's improved but it's still sensitive. And the one other thing that I didn't like about traditional in-ear monitors was being closed off from the crowd. I mean, cover your ears right now and listen to what that sounds like. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to walk out on stage and the crowd's going to be like... And you can't really hear that, hearing the crowd energy and all that. And also talking to other musicians on stage. That was always a tough one for me. Having conversations in between songs, I can't hear you, you know, I've got my in-ears in. That whole thing really bothered me. So these guys with the mics built in, that's why these are a game changer to me, because now I can blend in ambient signal at any level that I want. Normally the sensation we put an in-ear in is in-ear monitors in is you're closed off from the world, but when you put these in and blend in these microphones, it kind of sounds like you don't have in-ears in. Right, that's the point. And you can do that at any level. Think of it almost as like an active earplug. I mean, you could mix the mics in at minus six, minus 12, all the way up to zero dB. You can even boost with them. Mm -hmm. so. It's just like you've got this whole world of, uh, of you know, ambient sound that you've now got to kind of mix in and use. And it's so great because as a guitar player, my thing was always like, I'm cut off. I can't hear my amp. Mm. I, you know, I, I cut off from the drums. I, I'm used to being able, able to uh, walk closer to the drum kit and hearing the hi-hat louder, hearing, you know, for time, you know, or walking over to the bass player and get hearing a little more bass. That kind of goes out the window with traditional in-ears. You've just got that static mix that you're kind of stuck with. Now you're getting that intimacy and immediacy back with your bandmates, with the audience, with the acoustics of the room. It's all back, which you don't get 
pretty much with any other IM in the world because you're sealed yeah. off. And some people say, well, yeah, but what about when they blend in ambient mics on the stage? Well, those are stationary. They're only in one place on the stage. My experience with those types of <coughs> ambient mics being blended into the mix is many times there will be like a maybe a drunk guy in front of the microphone in the first <laughs> row. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and you can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the ambient, you're like, turn those down. It's just not the same as this, which is completely, it's like your own ears. I mean, with the mics right here, it's spatial, and it's it, it moves with you, and it's yeah. stereo, yeah. and it's just so cool. So uh, the way that I approach this system is almost like you can think of it a little bit more like you're using a wedge, because now you can hear your amp, you can hear the stage. You'd be like, well, I can basically hear what's going on. Why don't you just give me a little bass, a little kick, a little snare, a little hi-hat, some of the lead vocal, you know, I don't really need a lot of my own guitar, maybe a little bit, because, you know, almost like you would with a wedge, because you can hear your amp. So it's like this amazing thing. These were invented 13 years ago by Dr. Michael Santucci, who, of Sensophonics, who's the audiologist to, he goes all the way back to the Grateful Dead, to the current, you name a person, Michael's worked with them, and he doesn't name drop. Hmm. It's just his mission has been, because he grew up as a trumpeter, hmm. his dad was a big band leader in Chicago, and his mission became to give musicians a career until the day they stop. So as I understand it, when Sensophonics was started by Dr. Santucci, uh, the primary concern and focus was actually on hearing preservation. Uh, you know, they essentially didn't want you to go deaf. They wanted to help musicians have a great career and not lose their hearing. So there was a lot of emphasis and focus placed on that. For instance, they would do musicians' earplugs that had uh, filters in them that would take the sound down minus 15 dB or minus 25 dB, but retain fidelity and top end, unlike traditional foam earplugs, which are horrible. So that transferred over with the in-ear products that they make and develop. Uh, you know, uh, with a lot of in-ear companies these days, you're going to see an emphasis placed on more drivers, more drivers, more drivers, uh, you know, fuller sound. And what you're doing is you're jacking a lot of bass right there on your eardrum, essentially. And if you've worn in-ears before, any kind of headphones, really, you probably noticed like maybe some ringing afterwards. And it might have not even seemed like you had the sound that loud. There's something that happens when we feel the sound pressure coming off something like a drum kit or an SVT or a Marshall guitar amp. And it's hitting your whole body as well as getting into your ears. Trying to reproduce that sensation with all that low end and bass and whatnot right here on your ears can be like really damaging for your hearing. So with the way that Sensophonics designed these in-ears, the way they configured the drivers, and then having the ambient mics, but you can mix them at a lower level as well as a built-in limiter so that you can control peaks and spikes into your ears. I mean, the focus is really on giving you a great sound experience while preserving your hearing. This is the app on the phone that Bluetooths up uh, to the in-ear pack, and this is the microphone level. So you can set that ambient level at anything you want, minus you know, 20, minus 12, you know, all the way up to zero dB, wherever you want your ambience. Of course, you're not gonna play with an app while you're playing live you know, during a gig. So on the little pack that they give you here, these two buttons serve as up-down volume buttons for the ambient signal. Or they can also be put in a mode where you can toggle between two different settings. So you could have the ambient mics at say minus 12 and then at zero dB if you wanna just hit a button. They can go all the way up to you know, uh, unity gain or down to minus 12 or down to minus 16 or whatever you want. You can set it to two uh, preset points. On the pack itself there, you got a little USB charging port there. So you can just plug this in and charge it. It's rechargeable and the battery life's really long. No problem getting through even the longest of gigs uh, with one charge on this pack. There's also a uh, eighth inch output there so you can send the output of your mix that you're hearing and record it if you like. Then you've also got a limiter there on the app that you can preset uh, to whatever you want. So you can have it at uh, 105, 102, uh, 99 dB. I would probably recommend like the 99 dB setting maybe as a good starting point, maybe the 102. 102 dB is pretty darn loud. In practice, it works pretty well for me. It's kind of amazing how loud stuff is too. Like sometimes, you know, I'll go over to a singer and they'll lean into your ear and they'll scream a note. And it's like, even at 102, I'll hear the limiter pushing down on the signal. So it's pretty cool you got that limiter there and your, you know, extra layer of protection there to not damage your ears. So another really cool thing is there's an EQ. Uh, I found on certain stages, you know, if there's a lot of sub, um, sometimes I want to pull down the, uh, the the low frequencies and just, you know, per room and per sound check, I'll kind of tune in the ears to sound a little different. Occasionally, I might boost top end a little bit just to get a little bit more clarity if a room is really boomy and kind of weird. Generally speaking, I just do small moves with this EQ, but it works really well. 
And then you've got an ability there to save settings if you've got maybe, you know, a certain preset setting that you want to have for a certain venue, and then you're going to go back to that venue but go somewhere else the next day. That's no problem. You can store presets of the EQ, the ambience, uh, the limiter, all that stuff will get saved. And then wherever you tune it in on the app, and then when you close the app, that's where the pack will stay until you open the app again and change the settings. So this system, this one I've got in right now, is the basic one that you can get from you guys, and it comes with the kind of the, yep. uh, I guess what they call it, a generic sort of tip uh, that you can put the foamies on, and they, it's included with, with the, uh, the Three kit. Three sizes. Yeah, the yeah. foamies. And uh, these these on their own just sound great, but for these you can get a couple different, uh, there's some options. Like for instance, on the last tour I did, I actually got some custom molded tips made. So I take these off and then you put on the molded tips. You go to an audiologist, have them pour a mold, just like a traditional kind of in-ear monitor, and those just pop on this system right. and you put them in. So that's what I used on uh, Classic Rock Show 2022 tour, which worked just great. Uh, there is one way to go beyond that even. If you decide that you really love the system and you want to go all in, you can actually get custom molds made with, you know, connected cable, the whole mold, everything in one with the mics built in. Right. right. And yeah, it's called the Custom Tour. Yeah. And Michael, Dr. Michael Santucci makes that for you in Chicago based on your molds. It's all hand-built yeah. silicone. And most IEMs are either hard plastic or they're a blend of like a plastic and polymer or rubber, um, which is fine. However, the reason that you get earwax, for example, is because you're in, your ears sweat because mm. it's skin, just like anything else. Sure. So with a traditional uh, plastic or rubber um, rubber plastic blend mold in your ear, um, one, after about two or three hours, most people say it starts to hurt. But two, when your ear starts to sweat in there, it loses some of its seal. So your yeah. low end starts to go a little bit, whereas Michael always builds his custom tips and the fully custom tour out of silicone for two reasons. When you wipe your finger across like a silicone tip, you'll feel a little friction. That's intentional. So when it goes in, it sits there. But then as your body temperature goes up, it opens up and then the seal actually gets stronger. But yeah. the beauty of silicone, after a while, I've put them in my, I've had my custom tips in my ears for like six hours. Yeah. I forget they're there. Yeah, yeah. It's so, you don't feel it. You feel in the steel, the seal stays. So yeah. you don't lose that. Because right. I've had that happen many times yeah. in your ears sweat traditionally you know, the kind of the harder materials and stuff and you'll start you know you smile or something all of a sudden all the base you'll goes away because you yeah. feel it move and that doesn't happen well these are comply tips which are michael um actually helped to work on these and yeah. they're the finest um off the shelf tips you can get that's and awesome you get small medium and large in yeah. the in the in the case here we give you everything you need. I can't thank you enough for stopping by, and um, yeah. I'm really a fan of this. It's a great, great system, and it's been working out really good for me. I'm about to go out on a tour for about a month, uh, starting mid-July through mid-August, and I'm going to be using them, and uh, you know, just really looking forward to it again. So cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pete. It. Appreciate yeah. it. Have fun out there. I say this all the time in my videos, and it's silly, it's like cliche, but what's not to like? That's pretty cool, right? I mean, if you can have the experience of in-ear monitors and all the great things that they offer and also have, you know, full-on open ambient sound or ambient sound at any level that you want, you've kind of got it all. Thanks, Dr. Michael, uh, Sensophonics, who designed this system. Thanks to ASI. This system has really helped me to enjoy playing live when using in-ears a lot more. I'm going to put a link to ASI down in the video description below so you can click down there and it'll take you to uh, the website so you can check out this system more and look into it if you're interested in this sort of thing. Take care you guys. I am Pete Thorne. Over and out.